So I'm just gonna go over everything that I use and why on the day of the wedding when recording audio. And the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the Rode VideoMic Pro. So this is on top of my camera at all times. Both switches are all the way to the right. I record manually instead of automatic within the camera because I'd rather use the preamps in the Rode VideoMic Pro rather than the preamps in here because they sound better. Um, other than that, I like to use rechargeable 9 volts in here just so that I'm not wasting and throwing away a bunch of batteries every day. Um, and yeah, I've got two of these. Um, so if I have a second shooter who doesn't have one, I make sure to have one on top. But um, this is great for prep, it's good for everything. Um, if you're getting that natural sound, it'll be better. Uh, all the sound is being recorded in front rather than the back. So if like you're out of breath and you're breathing like this, you know, you're not gonna hear it as much as if it was in front. So that's much better than the onboard. So I would recommend this. They have like a hundred dollar one from Rode. Um, they kind of like, it's like the cheaper version. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. It's like almost just as bad as the onboard mic. So if you're gonna get a mic on top of your camera, I recommend this Rode VideoMic Pro. So uh, my other big workhorse is this Zoom H1. I'm planning on upgrading these to something else, but right now these are you know just baller for like $100 each. Um, and then you get a good size card. I work with like four, uh, like 16 gigabyte micro SDs. It gives me like an infinity amount of recording space when I'm on uh, dot, you know, wave instead of uh, MP3, just because MP3 will just compress the hell out of your sound. So uh, make wave happen. Uh, keep the auto level off. Well, it depends on what you're doing, but typically you want to just keep one level. Otherwise it's going to be going up and down and like the noise floor is going to be like really weird and I just don't recommend it. And then uh, low cut on, you know, uh, you can keep it off if you want more of a natural sound, but I just don't like those, the sound that it gives me. So yeah. So I pair my Zoom H1s with Countryman B3s. Um, of course, there's links in the description for all these items, but I just think this is a wonderfully cheap sounding pair. Um, so I always put these in the pockets of whoever I'm miking up, and I'm actually wearing a Countryman B3 hooked up to a Rode, so this is the sound that it gives you, compared to, say, the Rode VideoMic Pro on top of the camera here, or even worse, you know, the onboard mic from the other camera we're shooting with. So this sounds good in my opinion. I like it, you know, I'll control the EQ and post a little bit, but that's another video. You'll notice that I have this little right bracket here. I just think that it helps to keep, um, you know, the mic because it has a locking thing, but as for a Sennheiser, not for this device, I'm kind of like DIYing this. So um, I do that. And if I really am scared that it's going to fall out or like get weird or something in someone's pocket, I'll just take tape and I'll just tape all the way around so that there's no way that, you know, they're going to take that out. And of course, you know, putting it on, on hold is a good precaution for that. So always do that. And uh, yeah, I, I love this, this cheap little device. So through the day, you know, I'll typically, if I sense a, a, a card reading or a note reading or something or a gift exchange happening during the prep, I will mic up the groom or the bride before that happens and get that nice audio. Um, I will mic up the groom, so throw it in the pocket and then lav him up for the first look because I definitely want that audio. For the ceremony, you know, I've got three of these, so three pairs. Um, I will mic up the officiant, the groom, and then uh, if there's a reading podium, I will mic that up. Whatever audio source I have, I've typically gotten away with three, but then I also have another audio recorder that I put in the back of the ceremony just so I can get like natural sound all the way through the ceremony. So in case there's clapping or it just is much, it's a much different sound than the labs that are up on the people. Cause like you'll hear them like making noise or moving. So if you have one mic just chilling by itself in the back, um, that's always good to have. So I typically have three or four mics for the ceremony. And the Countryman B3s are awesome because you get this little um, case and like I'm such a sucker for these cases because it works perfectly and you like you like fold them or tie them up and put them in here it's awesome and another thing I would recommend getting are these Ryocote undercovers they can be a little expensive if you go through them like crazy but uh, this comes with a couple dozen of them in white black and gray I'm actually wearing one right now so what you do is instead of the little clips you kind of put a little sticky pad so without making too much noise I'm gonna try to 
show you. So there's like a felt side and then there's like a sticky side. So you put the mic on there and uh, it hides it. And I've never had a problem with these like whoops, falling off. So uh, they're super convenient, really good for micing a bride up. So for the reception, we almost always have to like depend on someone else. I wanna try to get away from that. But at this moment, I'm using Tascam products for recording um, XLR or whatever the DJ is giving me. Um, this is the one that I'm using right now. Uh, this is the one that we just upgraded to. Mike Giardino of Palette Films has this, and it's like the upgraded version of this. So um, this is awesome because you can record up to four XLR or quarter inputs. Um, plenty of options for what you're recording into. You have all the dials and the knobs right here to make quick adjustments. Um, it's built to be underneath a, a DSLR, but I just you know keep it with the DJ stuff wherever. So yeah, this is my bag of uh, cables. I don't know what the DJ is gonna give me, but I wanna pre be prepared for whatever that is. So this is the most typical thing that they give me. Um, so they'll be like, hey, I got like an RCA out or something. You're like, dope, I got a stereo port already. So plug this into his mixer and then this goes directly into, um, you know, two of the inputs. And you could be wondering why two when you only need one? With this device, you can record these two separate inputs at different levels. So if you're recording the same thing happening at different levels, that means if one peaked, the one probably didn't, the other one probably didn't. So it's a good way to back up. And actually with this Tascam, you can double that even more. So for each input, you can have two different levels. So technically, if you adjust your knobs right, you can have four different levels for one input. So there's like zero chance of you peaking. And at receptions, DJ's levels can change like crazy, whether someone's talking into the mic way too loud or not. So I definitely like to have that backup option. And it's just, you know, there's no reason not to. So I love this device. But as far as other things I have in here, just in case, XLR to XLR, uh, quarter to quarter, and then I have a, a XLR to quarter adapter if I ever need that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much in the bag. Um, one thing that you should know about these devices is that they burn through batteries real quick. It takes like a, a number of double A's, but one thing that I've gotten is just a super cheap way to fix that is um, having this portable battery. So it's like a rechargeable battery. Um, all you have to do is just plug it in the USB and then you can plug this in bus power to uh, power the device. And this will last all night. You know, you just, I would much rather not have to worry about this device losing power. So I just pair it with it, plug it in, power it by bus. And uh, yeah, my device is good to go. And I just, another thing I don't have to worry about. So that's all the gear I use. It really isn't too complicated. I try to keep things as basic and, you know, just what I need as much as possible. But then I also have to have, you know, my backups in case something happens. And then the options in case the DJ gives you something weird, you have to have the cables for it. Um, you just don't want to depend on other people as much as possible. So if you can control as much as you can, you'll probably be better off than people going there and hoping that the DJ has their cable or that hoping that you have enough audio inputters and recorders uh, for all of the people speaking at the ceremony and stuff. So like I said, this process is just evolving as I get different pieces of equipment and you know my needs for recording audio at the event changes. So this will probably be different in six months, but I would love to hear what, you know, what differences your kit is. Um, you know, ask and leave a question in the comment section below. But until then, thank you for watching.